Hello, everyone, and welcome to this first part of a keynote speech on authenticity in museums and heritage sites. Uh, this is one I was invited to do. Uh, it's about an hour long, all in all, and this is going to be the first part of it. And I'm just going to share screen with you. I hope this works um, so that we can get started on this. I hope you can see this now. I really hope this works. I called it to be or not to be authentic, a journey into the dilemmas and challenges of museum authenticity. And um, it's one of those terms that we often face when we work in museums and, and they tend to pose a bit of a dilemma, theoretically and practically, partly because they mean different things to different people, but also because they have a massive impact on how we approach our work in museums. Uh, there are certain terms, you know, like authenticity, relevance, meaning making, and so on, that keep they keep popping up and we keep returning to them. And it's because they keep developing, isn't it? And, and our practice is with them. And we need to sort of redefine them uh, once in a while to, to keep up with our purpose. And this makes them, of course, incredibly interesting, but also challenging. Uh, and I would like to take you on a little journey with this uh, this keynote speech um, into some of the complexities, the challenges, the discussions that surround authenticity within museums and heritage sites. So I hope you are very much up for that. And this is going to be the first part of that speech. So this is what uh, we're going to do. So there will be this is an introduction. This is me introducing it. And there will be a few definitions and theories. Bear with me. I'll try not to make it too boring, but we kind of need to, to, to get over that step. But I also very much wanted to present a few case studies that highlight some of the dilemmas and challenges we face around authenticity. Um, it is in our daily work at our museums that these terms need to be used. So I wanted to present a few examples of authenticity in action as well. Um, and please, please do share any examples, any thoughts and so on you have on this as well. It, it's such a vast subject and I can't get around all of it here. So I would really like to hear some of your approaches to this. Um, authenticity is also something we encounter in our meetings with visitors and visitors might have their own view on authenticity. Uh, interpretation is this area that operates between uh, academic and historical research and visitor connection, interaction and participation. And this is where the translation, if you like, happens between hardcore research and visitors of all ages and, and all stages of knowledge. And here we are constantly faced with dilemmas and discussions dealing with authenticity. And it's really, really an interesting thing to, to discuss. So I want to dive into that a little bit. And then finally, a few thoughts about the future with regards to authenticity and how we go about it. So this is what we'll do. I hope you're up for a little trip into the complexities of authenticity and, and what to make of it, both for us as museum professionals and for our museums and sites and very much also for our visitors. All right. So let's start our mission by finding, finding out what we actually mean when we talk about authenticity. And let me begin by, by, by presenting you with a, an interesting question and something that has been a bit of a dilemma for me as well. When you visit like a famous museum, let, let's say like the Louvre in, in Paris, for example, I think most people know about that if they haven't been, and you stand in front of like a famous artwork, the Mona Lisa, everyone knows about this. And in front of that, you know, the actual Mona Lisa, Leonardo's famous painting. And you can't help but feeling, sorry to say this, but a little disappointed. Have you ever had that feeling? Because I have to say I have. She's so tiny. It's such a tiny little painting. And there's always like this huge crowd of people in front of her, you know, like talking, taking selfies and me and Mona Lisa, you know, that kind of thing. And Let's be honest, she's not the most impressive piece of art in that museum, is she, if, if we are honest about it. But it gets us to today, today's topic because we are drawn to the real, to the authentic, to the original. And we can't really bear it if it disappoints us because we want that experience to be special and to wow us. You know, this is the original. Wow, I'm standing in front of it. 
And this is where authenticity becomes complicated because obviously it's not the Mona Lisa's fault that she's tiny, that it's a tiny picture or a tiny painting. And obviously it's not her fault that there's always the huge crowd of, of, of people in front of her or around her. But it does influence our experience when we visit, doesn't it? It does do something to that experience. It does impact how we think about the original, um, which is what we are, we are so rooted in, in museums. We are all about the original. And sometimes it makes us question, what actually does it mean when we talk about authenticity in museums then? Is it all about having the original? Is that enough to create an authentic experience, an authentic connection? Um, because it's it's honestly very hard to be, I think, uh, well impressed or feeling an authentic connection when there's you know a huge crowd of tourists pushing each other uh, in front of it, or uh, 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 you know taking selfish or, or the, 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 lots of other very impressive artworks around something. Um, and is it actually enough? to have something that is the original, to create an authentic connection. Is that enough for our visitors? Or what else is, is at play here that impacts that experience? Um, so let's begin there, I thought, with that kind, of, that kind of feeling and thought, because I think we have all had that feeling at some point when we have been visiting a famous artwork or a famous museum uh, uh, to see a specific artifact or or, um, or, or or artwork. So cut to the cutting to the chase. What does authenticity mean? So let's just remind ourselves of the word and let's have a look at a dictionary definition first. I promise this will be quick and it, it will be uh, it won't be pay, painful, I, I promise you. Let's begin with a Cambridge dictionary. So the quality of being real or true. That's the definition of authenticity in Cambridge Dictionary. Real or true? <laughs> I mean, talk about two words that are up for discussion. There are probably as many different definitions as uh, uh, of real and true as there are people on the planet, I imagine. Let's just go to Oxford English Dictionary. This is interesting. Of undisputed origin and not a copy, genuine, made or done in the traditional or original way or in a way that faithfully resembles an original based on facts, accurate, or reliable. Okay, so an original, we, we know about that from museums, not a copy, something that is genuine, but also look at, at, at the phrase there, in a way that faithfully resembles an original. That's a rather broad definition, isn't it? So these are just two examples. If you, if you uh, look up the term in other dic dictionaries or online, just Googling it, you will get lots of similar words and explanations. Um, so something like this, for example, um, real, true, uh, genuine, uh, exactly as it appears, correct, right, not wrong, accurate, reliable, based on facts, not a copy, but an original, and so on and so on. This is a lot <laughs> to try and define just one term. So what are the challenges here? What, why is this term so hard for us to define? Let's just look into some of these challenges that we're facing. A challenge can be incomplete historical records. So gaps in information, this may create uncertainties about authenticity. And we, we have gaps in historical records. We don't know everything that ever went on. Restorations, repair and interventions of objects in order to preserve uh, and stabilize, for example, very fragile originals. This may que create questions around authenticity because how much then of an object is, is real, is original then. But on the other hand, it's necessary in order to preserve uh, um, objects very often. Reproductions and, and, and copies, um, when originals are too fragile to display, we all know about that. If we've ever done any kind of exhibition uh, uh, design, we sometimes use copies, we have to. Interpretation, of course, and reconstructions of historical environments or installations, these can introduce elements of imagination into a presentation or just simple guesswork. Um, 
And this is something that may uh, create a challenge for, for establishing authenticity as well. And then finally, I put in ethical considerations because museums face ethical dilemmas regarding acquisition and display uh, of certain objects and particularly those with, let's say, contested or problematic uh, uh, histories. Um, we actually face this dilemma quite a lot. And it's sometimes, as you know, uh, a very heated and emotional debate, a subjective debate that doesn't make it any easier. Uh, but it does also question uh, how we look at authenticity and especially when it comes to ethical sort of dilemmas and, and questions and how a museum goes about these. So let's turn to some of the definitions that we know exists already in the museum and heritage sector. And uh, I wanted to present uh, this to you. It's from an article by Stefan Svan and Silke Dutch in the Museum Journal. It's from 2020. And uh, they, they have some really interesting descriptions of authenticity in this article. They describe here some of the characteristics of authentic objects. This is an interesting quote. Authenticity is not an objective characteristic, but rather a relational concept established between object and perceiver. That is, museum visitors ascribe authenticity to objects on the basis of certain criteria, which may vary both across visitors and across objects and museums. So what they're saying here basically is that it's not just up for museums professional to define what we mean. It's also to be established by visitors and across objects and across museums, even museums have different museums might have different uh, definitions of authenticity. Um, according to Sven and Dutch in in this uh, in this article, visitors have certain criteria uh, by which they judge if an object is authentic or not, and these are quite interesting to 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 dive into here. So some of the questions around these involve. Is it an original? I think we all know that question. You know, is this a real one or a copy? We know that from most museums. Um, is it of historical or personal significance? That, that's, that's an interesting one as well. Is it unique or rare? Is it of high monetary value? I find that one really funny as well. There's, there's a little bit of treasure hunt in this question, isn't there? A little bit of sort of Indiana Jones kind of thing. You know, we want to find the gold kind of thing in, in that. Is it valuable? Uh, was it innovative at the time of creation? That's an interesting question. So was this, you know, uh, a new innovative thing, object that was created at the time? Does it allow for stories to be told? All interpretation people love this one, but all we want to do is tell stories, really. And does it provide important insights for research? Another really, really interesting um, question. So these are visitors' criteria for identifying authenticity in objects, of course, alone. There are certain psychological criteria that these, that there, so, sorry, psychological factors that these criteria impact according to, to Sven and Dutch. And let's just have a look at some of these. First of all, we know that it attracts visitor attention, these criteria. We know that it arouses visitors' curiosity. It makes visitors think more intensively about an object and its, his and its history when these criteria are, are in place. It also impacts the design of the exhibition. It impacts how we actually present the objects and the stories. Replicas and reconstructions play an important role in exhibitions too, and are often accepted by visitors as a way of illustrating the story behind the object. That is really, really interesting. So visitors are perfectly prepared to accept copies if they help you tell a story, if you, they help you get closer to, to the object. So these uh, effects impact the way we communicate with, with visitors, the way we view what we do and our collections and our displays as well. But what it also tells us is that visitors care. It matters to them uh, how we go about these questions and how we address them, which means that visitors' views and approach to authenticity is something we have to take into consideration. I mean, as if it wasn't hard enough to, to, to approach this concept. Uh, however, all of this, of course, was in relation to objects. So uh, what if we have different contexts here? 
and the importance of context in authenticity is is a really really huge one to establish as well so setting for example objects versus experience are you working with objects here or perhaps historical experience experiences or events that you are trying to recreate or display that actually matters in this your storyline and its intention the storyline or story perspective we have chosen and why we want to tell a story this way matters very much so and too the place the type of museum or heritage site uh, is it a museum or perhaps a historical place um, this matters because a historical site is already an original in its own right. So what we have done uh, to preserve it and to display it very much matters too. Purpose and function of the visitor experience. Uh, what do we want to tell? What do you want to show? What do you want to convey and so on? What is the experience we want visitors to have, in other words? And added history and, and the emotional context, um, especially in relation to objects. Objects gain a history during their time in a museum. And this will impact the way we look at them as well. And some part times we put a lot of emotion or feelings of ownership onto objects. I think we have plenty of examples of that. And this complicates uh, our understanding of objects, including our sense of authenticity. Okay, so what does historic authenticity look like in museums or heritage site interpretation then? Well, a lot of the time we see interpretation based on historic events where the unknown gaps have been filled using different layers of interpretation like learning, fictional stories, educational layers and so on, or elements from present time. We can have elements like uh, live interpretation, living history, role plays, you know, LARPs. Uh, films, liter literature, games, and so on. The key is not to try and present these events, uh, pretend that these events are accurate or historically factual, but to make them believable. We know we are not historically accurate when, when we create living history events or role plays, but we have to make the events believable or else visitors are certainly not going to buy into them. So let's look at one of the biggest dilemmas we can face within our, uh, within our uh, museums when it comes to authenticity. And I have some questions here I would like to pose for you. What happens if our perception of authenticity within our museum clash with the views of our visitors and audiences? What happens if visitors come to visit your museum with an inauthentic expectation, with an expectation to experience something that is not real or accurate or facts? Do you stick to your own perception of authenticity as a museum uh, professional? Do you disappoint maybe your visitors, tell them that they are wrong? Or do you go with their expectations? Do you compromise, if that's the right word to use, your belief about authenticity in order to embrace other viewpoints? Um, I would like for you to please keep some of these questions in mind because I'm, I'm sure they will pop up again as we go along. And uh, also, I hope provide for some interesting discussion. And also, please keep them in mind um, for the next part of this because I would like to go into a case study now um, authenticity in action, in other words, and uh, I have a case study where these questions become became very, very relevant uh, during the course of the project. So, um, and we will discuss that in the next part of uh, this keynote speech on authenticity in museums. So, please choose, tune in again, and I'll see you next time.